Welcome everyone to IDB. This is Andrew in our HomeKit automation series where we explore tips and tricks for dealing with your HomeKit home. We're gonna look at a new app called HomePass. And basically if you're anything like me, you have a stack of these types of little pamphlets laying around with the HomeKit codes printed on them. Some accessories have them printed on the accessory themselves, but as a backup, I keep these codes handy. I mean, if I have a ball plugged in the ceiling and I need to reset it and re-add it to HomeKit, I don't want to have to get up there and look at that code. So this app makes it really easy to store all of those accessories. So you can tap add in that top right hand corner and then choose either create a new accessory or add an existing accessory where in fact it'll actually find all the accessories that you have already in your home. As you go through the list and you add these to HomePass, they'll actually be removed from this list. So it makes it easier as you add accessories to par down this list. If you're like me, you have a ton of accessories and it can be a little bit intimidating trying to identify which one is which. In this case, I want to add my Eve light switch. So I find my Eve light switch located here in the dining room. Since it is an existing accessory, all the information is pretty much added. So the room, all that perfectly good. And now I just need to add the HomeKit coat, which is printed on the back of that little piece of paper that I've been storing since I put this thing in. You can still alter the other information, give it a name that you'd prefer, add some notes to it if you'd like. For instance, if you have multiple switches, multiple light bulbs in the same room, you can actually give a little note of which one is which. So that way when you're looking through these, you know which code goes to which product. Creating a new accessory works uh, the same way, except none of the information is pre-populated for you. You have to manually go through, give it a name, give it a room, give it a category, all of that, as well as add your notes. When you do choose the room, you don't get to choose from a list of your HomeKit rooms that you already have. You have to just write it in, but it doesn't really tie it back to anything in HomeKit, so it's not a big deal. And of course, under categories, it's pretty much all the HomeKit categories that are currently there. But if you're using something like HomeBridge and you have like an unsupported category, not a big deal. You can still, in fact, go through and choose other. It won't have a fancy icon to go along with it in the main screen view, but not a big deal. You can totally add unsupported accessories if you've got them. Once an accessory is saved, you're good to go. You don't need to keep those little papers around anymore. You can jump in, view them. It has kind of little home kit cards you see all on top, a little box around the home kit code like you would if you were scanning it on the back of a device. Inside of settings, there's a few things you can enable, like Touch ID or Face ID, which I mean, these are your HomeKit codes. These are kind of secure, so you can protect that information, as well as sync everything over iCloud, which is always handy. There are different themes, like dark light mode and dark mode, and it can change that automatically, just based on the time of day and what's going on. It's really handy to have that kind of dark mode, light mode built in. And lastly, you can export your entire database into a CSV file, or you can reset the database and erase everything all at once. As you get more accessories in your home, it becomes harder and harder to manage. If you ever have to reset anything, you do need that HomeKit code. You could write them down, you could put them into a little Excel document yourself, you could save all the little pieces of paper, but HomePass makes it really easy to secure it, back it up, and make it available. It makes it easy to add them by pulling from your already existing list. If you wanna check it out, you can find a link for it below in the description, and I wanna hear what you guys think down in the comments. Make sure to check out all of our other HomeKit automation videos, and until next time, this is Andrew for IDB.